Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology forecast for the week between November 3rd and 10th, 2018. I have a tail here at the edge of the camera that is very interested in cuddling right now. So, what an amazing time we're having this week. We're having the nodes move to Capricorn Cancer and we have uh, Jupiter coming in back home to Sagittarius every 12 years, 6 months or so Jupiter comes home and this is considered a benevolent time, this is considered a happier time, a more optimistic time, a time of expansion both of our minds, view and understanding, our concepts, our knowledge, our wisdom. A time that is good for traveling and good for studying. And Jupiter is going to spend around a year, a little more than a year, uh, in his home. And this is usually, as I said, considered a much more harmonious and fortunate time. So I'm personally really glad to be walking away from all this turbulence and drama, from all this challenging, challenge after challenge after challenge, change after change after change. Will it manifest? Will it not manifest? Now, this is already a much more harmonious time in which we are able to expand and so adapt a viewpoint which is much more optimistic and if we're talking about negative influences it could have extreme influences that are unbalanced we could be too happy-go-lucky too sure of ourselves too confident that what we believe in Jupiter Sagittarius is true and we could be really preachy and preach to everyone around us mostly because we're trying to convince ourselves deep deep inside but because if you're really sure of something you don't need anybody else to believe it you know it to be self-evident as they say so this is one thing that is happening the nodes moving back into this ICAC Capricorn Cancer Axis, which has a very psychological aspect to it and needs a lot of belief also, so the work could be done properly. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the fact that working with the most intimate and, and naive and youngest oldest root one has the fourth house the icy cancer the home I came forth from my homeland my people my clan my family my home my mother me as a nurturing parent me as part of a home and a family me as I am within my own home inside to myself what I feel about myself all these connect to the fourth house to cancer to the icy it is our heritage it is <clears throat> the standards and beliefs we were raised on in a sense the ethical boundaries we grew up with it's actually what makes the inner what makes up our inner ingredients this is the material we have to work with this is what was poured into that cast and, and this is what we have to work with. While Capricorn, the 10th house, the, the, the 
MC is all about the future, not about the past. It's about your role here on the outside, in the outside world, on the great stage of life, not where you belong, not where you came forth from, not where uh, you feel guarded, but out there in the arbitrary planes, vacant of any reassurance, even the one that your toil and labor would be ever recognized. A lot of fears dealing with that place. It deals with taking my place, taking my stand within the family of man, within the structure, within the system, becoming that pillar that others can rely on, becoming that authoritative figure myself, becoming the old guide myself. So there's a lot of psychology involved here. Because if I go inside to excavate all these hidden protocols, all these algorithms that make me run, because these were the bricks I was built up with when I was a small child. This is my soul code, so to speak. Understanding that these algorithms, these hidden protocols, this emotional plutonic lava, working with our shadow, can produce breakthroughs. The other thing that can produce breakthroughs, I'm going. What I'm doing is I'm taking, um, I'm taking the axis, the four ten axis, Cancer Capricorn axis, and I'm creating two trines to that axis. One to the eighth house of Pluto, so sex can be helpful, but but psychology even more so. <laughs> and the other is to the twelfth house of spirituality, of belief, of becoming one with the world, of flowing with the current and understanding that we are on this oceanic current and we'll get there when we need to get there. We are on the road. Um, so these two approaches can really help us great, get to great um, to great uh, uh, um, to prove ourselves and to um, do great things in our career, to do great things on this public stage of the world. Um, and in front of other people and take our place if we only uh, work with our shadows and believe we're on the road. And in a way, when the nodes move once every, or when the nodes return once every 18 years to Capricorn Cancer, this is a time that can really bring up in people a need to go outside. And a lot of questions of, is it the right time to go outside? Am I ripe enough to present myself, to be that person, to actually mold myself into that hardened cask, cast? Um, and as I said, it's a time that can produce great outcomes and, and, and bring about great things when you look back at this time in retrospective. Another thing that is happening this week is that um, we're having a new moon in 15 degrees of uh, <coughs> Scorpio. That new moon, not only is it in Scorpio, it's sextiling the ruler of Scorpio, Pluto. Again, we're talking about the eighth house, we're talking about psychology, we're talking about working with this emotional lava, we're talking about transcendence, we're talking about transformation through the darkness into the light, of working with our inner sewage, so to speak, 
and cleaning it out, you know, fi filtering, making this, this water drinkable again. And how funny, it's also trining Neptune. Trining Neptune, again, the ruler of Pisces and the 12th house, talking about belief, talking about spirituality, talking about understanding that we are a drop in the ocean and understanding that sometimes subtleness can be much more um, useful than Georgia, you're so sweet. She touches me with her fingers like that so I would pet her. So sweet. It uh, would be better than, than remaining stiff and hard. So, let's go down to the weekdays. Saturday the 3rd. Uh, basically, not a bad day. Remember, I'm talking in Central European time. Uh, the morning is a little forgetful and lethargic, but from late morning onwards, and especially from the afternoon, this is an energetic time. It's great for intimacy. It's great for sex. It's great for working with that psychological uh, theme that I was talking about because there is a trine to Pluto from the moon. The fourth is a little sensitive. Uh, there's a square to Saturn and an opposition to Chiron from the moon. Um, this happens mostly in, in the evening. The morning, however, is much more optimistic and could be very joyful. Um, Sunday, the 4th. Uh, that was Sunday, the 4th. Monday, the 5th. Um, could be ambivalent. You know, there's all kinds of things happening in the sky. Some of them can feel as if we are not satisfied enough on that Monday. And when it comes to around the afternoon, really watch your temper and try and be a little bit more logical and detached, both with yourself and with other people. Put things in proportions. The sixth is a very beautiful morning and a more intense afternoon. It's the day that the nodes move into Cap Cancer. So it's a great day to do some kind of attunement, especially at the evening time. Um, when things become more hectic energetically, it's a day that Uranus would move back into Aries and oppose the moon. So being patient both with yourself and other people on that day is very important. Tolerance is important. Saying that, the morning of Tuesday is great for enjoyment, satisfaction, and doing things that are not of the left brain hemisphere, but more of the right brain hemisphere. Um, the seventh is a new moon. And remember when I talk about new moons, I want to take the day before the new moon, the day after the new moon, all as a time in which we are energetic sponges. Whatever is, um, whatever we absorb emotionally and whatever we send out emotionally, in a way, gets in that sponge and would come up again to, and visit us, revisit us during the next lunar cycle of 29 and a half days. So, I really try to put my ego aside at that, time, at that time to be more calm, to be nicer to myself and other people. And it really helps. Um, <clears throat> so the seventh is a new moon. And as I said, that new moon is going to sextile Pluto. It's going to uh, trine Neptune. Again, the eighth house and the twelfth house. Again, belief and, and, and uh, psychology. The fact that it is sextiling Pluto says that we can get stronger together, friends, groups, other people around us can really help us at this time. The eighth, um, basically, only the late morning could be a little agitating, could be more confrontational. Watch your aggression and watch yourself on the roads on the eighth 
at around just before noon time. After that, um, <clears throat> Jupiter would be going into Sagittarius. That later, later that night, it's going to be conjunct the Moon and trining Chiron. This could feel like a weight lifting off your shoulders. This could be a, a more optimistic time in which we feel affluence is starting to flow back into our life and that things are going to be okay. We have to be careful not to be too optimistic or too naive and not to be too extravagant or untactful at this time. But this is a great time for healing and just enjoyment of this life and the fact that we are alive. So this Tuesday with the Moon and Sagittarius, beautiful Friday, the same Moon in Sagittarius, Moon conjunct Mercury, uh, Venus trining Mars, exactly. That means that this is a great time for copulation. It's a great time for the marriage of the feminine and the masculine, for remembering the sacredness of that union and, and, and bringing about the wisdom and the joy that comes from that union. This is a time of uh, rejoicing from the fact that there is that duality, those two poles, and that it is not mixed up. It's a good time in relationships usually. Um, the, the night of Friday could be better for passive uh, enjoy, uh, enjoyment more than uh, being too active. <clears throat> it could be a little sensitive as well, Friday night. Saturday the 10th, beautiful day, again, Moon in Sagittarius, sextiling Venus, sextiling Mars on the other hand, creating a beautiful triangle. A good day to be with people, good day to enjoy the company of others, good day to enjoy yourself, good day to enjoy food and drink and art and and harmony and beauty and each other anyway i want to thank you for listening commenting and sharing these videos they expose them to much more people and um, i want to tell you that my site is undergoing automation that means that soon not yet but soon there are going to be all the dates for all the classes with all the groups and you don't even have to talk to me you can go online to my site and book it, either a session with me or uh, join one of the courses or groups. It's all going to be very easy, hopefully. And I'll just, I'll let you know once it's online. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Anyway, thank you for listening and have a great week on behalf of Georgia and myself. Live long and prosper.